my name is uh, Alina Marinchan and I am a PhD candidate at the Department of Communication, PR and Advertising at Babeshboy University from Cluj-Napoca, Romania. I'm also the curator of the Elie Wiesel Museum from Siget, um, Romania, part of the Maramureș Museum complex. And this is an overview of the most relevant aspects of the ethics of Elie Wiesel storytelling as a new theoretical approach uh, in representing the Holocaust. A uh, presentation that Professor PhD Sandu Frunza from the Department of Communication, PR and Advertising from Babeshboy University and myself have uh, shaped together. I will begin by sharing with you that with characteristic modesty, Elie Wiesel always described himself as a simple storyteller. But uh, we cannot disregard the numerous other ways in which he has been uh, recognized. Biographers have held up Wiesel alongside the most prominent biblical characters, have credited him with the gifts of prophecy and divine science, and have called him the keeper of the secret of restoring human condition. Alongside with Nobel Peace Prize, Elie Wiesel's name is associated with the beginning of narrative of suffering, creating one of the first, most relevant writings about Holocaust experiences. Placing him at the beginning of this uh, initiative, Elie Wiesel becomes one of the vocal presences in using narrative as a form of active involvement towards Holocaust interpretation. Based on Giorgio Agamben's confident assertion that once the historical, technical, and legal context of Jewish genocide has been sufficiently clarified, this remains particularly unclear when we really seek to understand the complex phenomena. The, the difference between what we know about the Holocaust and what we understand is felt mostly in its representation. Representations of the Holocaust have been developed in various ways, from testimonies to story-sharing platforms or classical museum exhibitions. It appears to be a certain fact that the representation of the Holocaust is of no means, neither a rigid nor a simple one. It needs the coalition of interdisciplinary approaches in order to succeed in generating the relevant response from the public, it requires a high level of accuracy of facts and notions as well as a deep reflective dimension. One of the challenges that face contemporary generation and its specialists in the study of genocide is how to include the consequences of the Holocaust into the ethical dimension of social design of communities around the world in order to prevent new manifestation of such atrocities. The vast world consumption of content makes it more evident than ever that sharing content proves to be an efficient and relevant way of communicating in an immersive, multisensory and participatory way. Communicating through stories is an old human characteristic as we all know and it can be proven from ancient times represented by cave drawings to cathedral masterpieces, photographs, book, oral tradition, and so on. Taking into consideration the narrative theory of the Eastern European Jewish culture as an integral part of both the domestic and religious universes, and that the storytelling skill is a cultural inclination, Elie Wiesel exercises this quality as a formula for identifying and manifesting Jewish identity on the one hand, and on the other hand, as an active confession of the experience of the Holocaust. As a storyteller, Wiesel tells stories about people, about the meaning of life, about radical evil, about survival, but also about joy and blessings, exploring in the same time the inexpressible. Using Elie Wiesel's narrative as a representation of Holocaust can be grounded on Elie Wiesel's stature of his stories that constitutes both a testimony and also an emotive narrative force providing a personal emotional bridge from the narrator to the public. As we move further from the event of the Jewish genocide and Holocaust survivors are less and less available for, the, for, the, for enhancing and learning of the Holocaust experience, new means of progressive learning have been introduced in Holocaust education programs. Constructivist theory emphasizes that in teaching and learning, attention must be on the learner 
not on what is to be learned, and teaching should respond to learners' disposition and moods and should maximize their learning potential. The constructivist theory admits that the information as knowledge is created in the mind of the learner using personal learning methods. Elivizal storytelling can provide an authentic platform as a space of mediation between the past and the present, the old and the new, with a voice of authority and responsibility of shaping thinking and behavior, a cognitive and emotional engagement that leads to profound, relevant experiences. The storytelling contributes towards a unique embodied experience for the general public to support the process of self-learning as well as interpreting and mediating memory. The integrated combination of experiential learning and the political purpose of social justice with social political commitment to promoting democratic practices is evident in almost any of the educational movements classified as progressive. The progressive way of representing the Holocaust creates sources of both contemplation and debate. Using characters, sometimes just as metonyms for himself, Elevisel's stories offer a wide range of addressability to the public. Each of the categories included in his narrative find correspondence, correspondence in humans in general, and humans can resonate and deeply immerse, even if only in the imaginative manner. Elie Wiesel's characters can function as guide, introducing the public into completely new territories, in a personal and intimate way. They introduce the public into Jewish mysticism, the peaceful Shabbat dinners, the happiness of summer holidays into Carpathian mountains, the domestical and intimate struggles of a community with its own good and bad, so that to take them in the abyss of the death, in the darkest iconic place associated to the Second World War, Auschwitz. The general official perspective on Holocaust and its representation is without doubt incomplete without the expression of personal experiences, with which on new progressive way of learning weigh more than intellectual, intellectual approaches in the process of creation of collective memory and Holocaust culture. The brevity of his storytelling along a hist historical, accurate, chronological timeline helps in creating a reliable and immediate contact with the public. Though historians have mistrusted personal narratives as reliable documents, in recent years they discuss how autobiographical narrative may contribute to understanding both the past and the process of accessing it. The autobiographies from the field of history complement other forms of representation of the past produced by literary scholars or novelists. Elivizal's narrative and stories serve on denouncing political violence, indifference of the standbyers, collapse of morality, and ethical values as cultural pro products of memory. On a different level, a profound theoretical approach through psychoanalytical inquiry may reveal a critical introspection of, of the self in regard to family members and to divinity uh, as a controversial relationship with the, in the case of, of Wiesel, all this defining the self as a personal cultural heritage through a process of deep, ref deep reflection, an emotional endeavor to reconcile fragments of the same self. Elie stories are full of themes and repetitive images that can be intercal intercalated in the representation of both the Jewish life before the war, be that theological, religious, traditional, and the contemporary Jewish identity, keeping the public culturally alert. The soul-shattering content of his narrative is presented with such clarity that the reader is not flooded with too much information and it is thus allowed to become unsettled only by the emotional impact of the narrative events. Wiesel's great artistic achievement consists in the transformation of the overwhelming, inexplicable, highly irrational experience into a graspable story that proceeds smoothly and linearly from point to point. On a different level, Wiesel's storytelling invites readers to share his questions but the questions his story provoke do not produce indifference or despair. Instead, 
they lead to more stories and to further questions that encourages protest against those conditions. Briefly concluding, we have little reason to believe, says Timothy Snyder, that we are ethically superior to the Europeans of 1930s and 1940s, and therefore less vulnerable to the kind of ideas that Hitler proclaimed and put so successfully into practice. As Benjamin Lee Wolf argued, our attitude towards a subject depends on how it is described. Elie Wiesel's perspective on genocide and its representation, linguistic content, political beliefs, but the poetry and sensitivity of his message become under the pressure of consciousness and implicit responsibilities, validated sources and normative frameworks of ethical conduct of a democratic society. And I would like to thank you all for your attention.